Hello. So I want to jump right in because this is going to be a live training today. And well, I'm going to go into a lot of details. So I don't want to waste any time. So today I'm going to be talking about um, using my trusty whiteboard here, how to steal my favorite hooks and just get this position right, to hooks and headlines and other sneaky devices, which the aim of which is to grab people's attention. So when people are like scrolling through Facebook, they're like this, they're like ball going Durr, like this. What is it that's going to make them stop in their tracks and go, oh, what's that? I need to read that. Then once you've got their attention, how can you keep that attention and keep it reading? Uh, feel free to say hi if you're watching. And if you've got any questions about your specific business as we go, ask them and I'll do my best to answer. So why is this important? Well, fairly obviously, if you're in a position where you're posting daily content to Facebook or Instagram or YouTube or LinkedIn, it's all the same. You're posting daily content. Uh, hey, Sarah. And people are saying to you, well, your coaches are saying, just keep on posting that content. You've got to be consistent. Keep on posting. And eventually, you know, eventually you'll get there. Eventually you'll get an audience. Well, in the past that might have worked, but these days that doesn't work anymore. And the reason it doesn't work is there's too much competition. Unless you really know how to make yourself stand out and you really know how to, hey, Nyla, how are you doing? and you really know how to grab people's attention and do something with it really skillfully, you're not going to cut through the noise these days because these days everybody's a coach. So I'm going to jump right in and start with my very first one. Now, before I jump in with my first one, actually, I wanted to tell you the goal here. So the goal is to when your prospect, your ideal prospect, is scrolling through Facebook. Uh, I've just got some notes on the other screen here, so I'll just put it over there. Um, when your ideal prospect is scrolling Facebook, your goal is to make them go, okay, what's that? Grab their attention first, then do something useful with it. So our goal is not clickbait, because what clickbait does is it grabs the attention, but then doesn't do something useful. So like maybe five years ago, like 2014, 2015, maybe up to 2016, all I saw on my newsfeed or on, in, on the internet was clickbait, like what this police officer did next will blow your mind. And then you read the article, and it never, ever blows your mind. Hi, Vicky. How are you doing? Um, I, I looked at some other ones today. This girl didn't know what was inside her until they cut off her pants. Shocking. Turns out she was pregnant. Not that shocking. When you, re when you find out what these kids are jumping into, your jaw will drop. Turns out it was a swimming pool. Wow. When you read these 19 shocking food facts, you'll never want to eat again. Turns out that some foods are high in calories. I mean, no fucking shit, right? You know, you eat a few eclairs, you might get fat. Not exactly like life-changing. Uh, and the final one, think this is a normal shed? Wait until you see what's inside. Turns out that the guy had uh, converted it into a bar. Brilliant, you know? I mean, it's like sort of interesting and cool, but the thing about clickbait is they make this massive promise, like it's going to blow your mind. It's going to be the most exciting, controversial thing ever. And then you read it and you're like, it's kind of like, Meh. And at the same time, when you click on it and you go to like the fake news site, there's like 15 other pop-up windows of ads that you have to close every three seconds. Or it's one of those sites where you've got to click next and go to 75 different pages until you get the answer. So I made a resolution in about 2016 after I've been to like 100 different clickbait sites. That I'm never, ever going to click on one of these again. And clearly a number of other people did the same thing because you don't see them as much anymore. <laughs> Yahoo still use that tactic of a clickbait headline. Yeah, they do. And where are Yahoo now? Not so good. Why are Google ahead of Yahoo? It tells its own story, doesn't it? Um, so we are not trying to use clickbait, but at the same time, we want to take the principles of clickbait, which are to grab your attention, but then do something useful with it so your audience doesn't feel like they've been tricked. They don't feel like they've been baited and switched. Baited and switched or baited and switched. I don't know. Anyway, so the first one, I'll jump to the service four here. The first one, which I will write down here, is... This is not easy while I'm trying to talk. Open loops. So you've probably heard. You've probably heard of open loops. Um, I think the term comes from NLP. Uh, but it basically means you are opening up a question in your, uh, your prospect's mind or the viewer's mind, which makes them think, what's the answer to that? And the only way they can get the answer is by going towards going to... Um, the end of whatever you've written. So back when I was a dating coach, I was like teaching people about internet dating. I used to say in the subject line of your email on Plenty of Fish, uh, put something that seems kind of like a controversial open loop, like, like this cannot be true about you, question mark. And then she's got to click it to read the message to find out what's inside. So it's sort of the same principle with this. You have an open loop 
where people are like, okay, um, I need to carry on reading to find out the answer. So this is the same principle as clickbait. Every clickbait article is an open loop. It's just they overpromise with their open loop. And then when you actually come to the article, you're like, oh, it didn't blow my mind after all. It wasn't the most shocking thing I've ever seen. So here's an example of some posts I've made where the very first line of my Facebook post is an open loop. Number one, there's something other business coaches do I find irritating. Now, the actual answer to this is the, I find it really annoying when you, coaches get one good result out of every 10 clients, but men make out like those results are typical. Like you'll have a client where they're like, my client Emily made a hundred grand only a month after joining with me. And you're like, yeah, but you didn't mention that Emily was already making 50 grand a month. And all you did was just tweak, tweak a few of her like sales skills and help her get a few more leads and just make a funnel a bit more smooth. Uh, basically something any half decent sales coach could do. And now she's getting those results. It's not the same as taking a brand new person to that, but you're making out like it is. So here's a question for you if you're watching now, um, which I'll give you a chance to do right after, but post in the comments why you think. Why didn't I start my post with, I find it really irritating when coaches get one good result out of 10 and then make out like those results are typical. Why did I not start with that? Why instead did I say, there's something other business coaches do I find irritating. Anybody want to hazard a guess while I take a drink of water here? Don't be shy now. I won't ridicule and shame you if you're wrong. Um, I, no, but nobody want to jump in yet. Well, I'm going to ask a few more questions as we go, so I want you to be a bit more interactive. But the answer is, well, in the, over, in the example where I say, I find it really irritating when coaches do this. Well, I've already given you the answer in the very first line. So why do you need to carry on reading? So an exercise for you to do after this, if you want to write it down or remember it, go to your profile, go to your content. Right, it's a statement in a closed loop, as Vicky says. It's like the answer's already there. So you don't need to carry on reading. Like, oh, I find it irritating when coaches do this. Someone might read it and be like, okay, cool, me too. Or, okay, no, I don't agree. But there's no reason for to carry on reading. Whereas if I say there's something other business coaches do, I find irritating, you need to carry on reading to find out what it is. Not only that, now, there's also controversy implied. Like, I'm annoyed about this, or I find this annoying. You want to find out what I'm annoyed about. So it's not just like I'm saying, you'll never guess what I had for breakfast this morning, because that's not controversial, it's not interesting. However, if I said, there's a very surprising and probably illegal thing that I ate for breakfast this morning, now there's some controversy implied. Now there's something weird. Now there's a story involved where you're like, what happened there? I need to carry on reading to find out what it is. Um, next one. This is a post I wrote. I'll never forget the utter shock on my friend Simon's face when the Korean midget thumped him square in the jaw. I mean, there's quite a few things going on there. So first of all, there's what was going on. Why were you like interacting with a Korean midget? Where were you? Um, what did your friend Simon do to make the career midget hit him? And what happened next? All of these are open loops that you want the answer to, presumably, when you hear that, because it's controversy. So you have to carry on reading to find out. Um, it's no different when you see, uh, when you're watching, like, your favorite soap or drama series, what happens at the end of every soap? Like, the wife walks in the bedroom and sees a husband in bed with a sister. And she's like, what the fuck? And the husband's like, it's not what it looks like. And then bang, credits roll, music plays. And hi, Anna. So you've got to carry on watching. You've got to watch tomorrow to find out what the hell happened. Well, it's the same principle here, but all we're trying to make people do is read the second sentence. Um, if the first sentence seems boring, they ain't going to get to the second. Another one, my secret posting method, which makes me stand out from all the other business coaches. Brackets, and let's face it, there's a lot. So here's a question for you to try and answer this time. Why did I post, and let's face it, there's a lot. Why did I not just say my secret posting method, which makes me stand out from all the other business coaches? Have a think about that, answer in the comments, and I'll answer that very shortly. But first, I'll just break down what I said. So I said my secret posting method. I didn't just say my posting method, because first of all, a secret is something we're not supposed to know. So it makes people more likely to want to know what it is. But also a secret implies you probably don't know this. So if I just said my posting method, some people might be like, oh, I probably know that already. I don't need to watch this. This was the tagline on a live video, by the way. So the aim of the tagline is just to make people want to watch the video, which makes me stand out from all the other business coaches. Well, there's a clear benefit there, isn't there? 
it makes me stand out. So if you're in my target audience where you're like, why am I not standing out? Why am I making all these posts that hardly anyone's interacting with and not getting any leads? Well, you're probably going to pay attention to that. So uh, Vicky says, and then finally, and let's face it, there's a lot. Vicky says, is it the promise of expertise and valuable info they can benefit from? Uh, no, no, it's not, but good guess. Um, so the promise of the valuable info they can benefit from is um, the posting method that makes me stand out from all the other business coaches. So the benefit is you're going to stand out from all the other business coaches. The reason that I put on let's face it, there's a lot, is I wanted to remind people I'm in a very competitive marketplace, possibly the most competitive marketplace there is online, business coaching. There's no shortage of business coaches now, is there? So if I'd said my secret posting method that makes me stand out from all the other scuba diving coaches online, well, you could have then been like, well, there's not many scuba diving coaches online. So, you know, obviously it's easy for you to stand out doing that because you've not got much competition, but I'm a dating coach or I'm a fitness coach. There's loads of competition there. So this doesn't apply to me. So I remind you, hey, my market's more competitive than anyone else's. So if I can do it, you can do it too. So this is a massive key, by the way. Um, one of the reasons that people aren't signing up to a lot of your offers or appearing in your inbox or booking calls with you, a lot of the time it's not because they don't think your offer is good. It's not because they don't believe uh, you can do a good job. It's believe that it's because they don't believe that what you're selling is going to get the result for them specifically. So if I go back again to when I was a dating coach, um, by the way, hi, if you just joined, feel free to say hello. Feel free to say hello and get involved in the video, join in the comments. If you've got any questions about your specific business, by all means ask them and I'll interact as I go. This is an interactive workshop. Um, what was I saying then? Um, I totally forgot where I was then. Um, yeah. Uh, Anyone, anyone want to remind me in the comments what I was just saying? Because I've completely lost my thread there. <laughs> Somebody, please. <laughs> uh, where was I? It was, uh, it was in the... Uh... Oh, that's it, yeah. It's because um, they don't necessarily believe it can work for them. So when I was a dating coach um, and I put an offer out, I'd say, oh, you can do this too. I'd get responses saying, oh, well, obviously it works for you because you're like a six-foot-one tall white guy. That's what women want. Um, I'm five foot six and I'm Indian or I'm Chinese or whatever. And women don't want that. So obviously it works for you, but it would never work for me. So then I had to work hard to say, look, I used to be in the same position you were in, you know, just cause I'm six foot tall and white, um, girls still weren't interested in me or the ones I wanted weren't interested in me. But when I learned this one thing, everything changed. It's not about where you're from. And I've helped people just like you get the result in the past. That's what helps to get them over the fence. Um, so <laughs> yeah, thanks, Vicky. So yeah, you're right. Business coaching is competitive, Nyla. You have to be exceptional in business coaching because every business coach has done like copywriting training. They've done other courses. They've done everything. Everyone knows the theory of marketing. So you've got to be above the level. Um, so think about in your marketplace, what things do you have? What uh, skills do you have where people go, oh, well, it would work for you, but not for others. For example, let's say you're a happiness coach, but you live in Bali. Well, someone might look at that and be like, oh, well, it's easy for you to be happy because you live in Bali and you probably sit with your feet up all day in the sun with a cocktail and you make one Facebook post a day um, and that's, that's what your life is and you go swimming three times a day and you have a lovely life and a nice tan. I live in the north of England and I work down a coal mine 12 hours a day. Don't you tell me about how to be happy. You know, Don't you lecture me on that until you've lived my life. So you've got to think about how to stand out from that. Now, if you want to know how to do this, get in touch with me. That's exactly what I teach on my program, in my course. All the people who've gone through my course, I've shown them how to do this themselves. Because a lot of the times, you don't even know what the answer to that question is. What are the secret things where people look at you and go, oh, it's easy for you to get the result of a coach, but it couldn't possibly ever work for me. What are those things that you need to overcome? You probably don't even know it right now, but that's why you're not getting clients in a lot of cases. Sometimes it's your offer, sometimes it's that, sometimes it's a combination of things. But I tell you exactly what it is. Once you get this right, you start making sales pretty fast. It's not rocket science, but you need someone to tell you. What you don't need is another generic training course with generic videos where you're like, okay, guess what? I've just paid 10K for this and now I've got to figure out the answer myself again. You need someone like me to show you. And I've got the answer for loads and loads of people so far before. There's no reason why you would be any different. Anyway, let's move on to the second one. So the second one is benefit. 
So I write that down. So the benefit is, what is the benefit to your audience of reading this post or watching a video? So this video you're watching now, steal my favorite hooks, headlines, and other sneaky devices. That's not the benefit. The benefit is to grab attention and real prospects in. So if you want to grab people's attention and reel them in, uh, then you want to watch this video. Now, I could have gone further and said to real prospects in so that they then um, buy whatever you're selling. So then I'll link it back to what you want, which is money. But I didn't go that far. you know. Uh, but what's the benefit? So here's a few examples. Last week, I made over 20K working over 20 hours from home. So that's benefit and it's an open loop because you're like, what the hell did you do? If you're only working, if you're working 40 hours a week and you make like 2K as a coach, you're going to want to know what I did there and you probably carry on reading. That's a post I did, I think, in May. Um, another one, opportunities to enroll brand new high paying clients are everywhere if you know how to spot them. I did that post a few months ago. So the benefit is the opportunities to enroll brand new high paying clients are everywhere. So you're like, wow, I could be enrolling high paying clients all over the shop. Um, again, is an open loop if you know how to spot them. So you're like, well, I don't know how to spot them, or do I know how to spot them? I'd better carry on reading just to see. Um, another one. Uh, these next ones are um, features in my course or benefits in my course are, are actually part of my course, but I phrased them in such a way so it's a really strong benefit. Write simple 10-minute Facebook posts from your phone which attract your ideal clients and repel the time wasters freebie seekers and folks with no money. So. If you're a coach who's been in business a while and you've had a lot of freebie seekers and people with no money and you're sick of them and you spend ages writing Facebook posts and you don't know what to do, um, you're going to be attracted to this and you're going to be like, well, not only that, it sounds easy. 10 minute Facebook posts from your phone. I sit there for an hour, like at the keyboard, not knowing what to write. I'd love to write a 10 minute Facebook post on my phone. Now, when you've been through my program, if you actually apply it, you can do this, but you don't get to do it on day one. What is actually required is probably writing five posts a week or more, sending them to me, me reviewing, and we're going back and forth and me fit, helping you fix it until after two to three weeks, you understand what you're doing. Then you can just write this stuff without thinking about it. Um, again, I don't see anyone else teaching this in this way, by the way, but it's super, super effective, by the way, if you want to learn how to do this. Um, but the key point here is there's a hook behind that, which I call easy. So that's hook number one. I'm going to show you two hooks as well in this. So if you can show people that what you've got is super easy, requires no effort, and is super fast, you're going to hook people in. As opposed to me saying the, the Facebook post techniques that Tabor take, takes you three hours to write um, and requires 15 different edits. But when you've done it, you'll get results. No one wants to learn that, do they? Uh, next one, messenger conversion mastery. Tap away on your phone on the sofa while you watch TV and enroll high paying clients without even needing a sales call. Again, easy. You're tapping away on your phone. You don't even need a sales call. Next one, the LinkedIn filtrator. This 10 minute a day method allows you to connect and enroll ideal clients on LinkedIn without spamming, cold messaging, or connecting and pitching. Again, a 10 minute a day method to allow enroll people on LinkedIn. Here's another example. I've made up a couple. The magic software that finds perfect leads on LinkedIn for you. Again, it's easy. You um, you don't need to put any effort in. You just click the button and off it goes. The Big Mac diet. Lose weight by eating only Big Macs. So this one's very clickbaity, isn't it? But um, technically, you if you ate one Big Mac a day, that would be under the amount of calories you need. I guess you would lose weight. I don't know. Maybe a fitness coach would correct me on that one, a nutritionist. But you can see there's a hook there. It sounds super easy. And there's still the benefit. So the next one, number three, and this is the second hook, secret fear. Secret fear. You get to see how appalling my handwriting is after like 20 odd years of typing and not writing. Um, so secret fear is what are the fears that your audience have where they're like, I know this is going on, but you know, I'm just not sure if it's true. Um, so headlines in here, you might have how to know if your children are taking drugs when they leave your site. If you're a parent with like, you know, teenage kids, you're probably going to read every word of that, aren't you? Um, if you're one of these like gun people who live in Texas and you're like, you know, the, it's our is it second amendment, whatever right to have guns. And you know, it's, it's our constitutional right to have guns. The secret plans of the liberal lefties to take away your guns. That just plays into that secret fear, doesn't it? And you're going to read every word of that. 
Third one, are some people just destined to be fat forever, no matter what exercise or diet plan they try? Well, if they're like you know, 30, 40 or older, and they've done all the exercise plans, they've done P90X, they've done Zumba and Super Duper Insanity and all the other stuff, and they've done the, uh, the diet plans like Paleo and uh, um, oh, what else is a Slimming World, Starve Yourself Thin, and they maybe lost some weight but gained it all in the end. Well, they're probably now at the point where we're like, maybe I've just got like bad genetics. Maybe I'm just destined to be fat forever. Maybe there's something wrong with me. Well, you could then take that um, – and then do something with it. So those people are going to see that and be like, oh my God, maybe I'm destined to be fat forever. They're going to carry on reading. Now, the key point that comes next, which we're going to describe in number four when we come to it, is you've got to do something with it. So if you just do what clickbait does, which is like not give a good answer, you're going to annoy your audience and then they're going to end up unfriending you or reporting your, you or just ignoring you from now on, which is obviously not what you want. So what you could do with that, are oh, some people are destined to be fat forever, is you could take that and then show them that they're not, but explain to them in a credible way, a credible way why all the stuff they've done in the past hasn't worked. So you could say, are oh, some people destined to be fat forever, blah, blah, blah. Um, then go on to explain. If you're in a position where you've done all the diet plans like XYZ and you've done all of the exercise plans like XYZ, uh, maybe you've lost you know, half a stone here and there, but then you've gained it all back. And every time you do a diet, you just can't stick with it. Maybe you've questioned, maybe there's something wrong with me. Maybe, uh, maybe I'm just not destined to lose weight. Maybe I'm destined to be fat forever. Well, all of my clients fall that too until they tried my training. Um, you know, Jenny lost X weight. Sarah lost X weight. Uh, Emily lost X weight despite having tried everything else before. What was different? Well, it wasn't that they hadn't found the right diet plan or exercise yet. It's that their brain didn't want them to lose weight. And then you go on to explain why there's your subconscious mind in some people doesn't want them to lose weight because it thinks it's protecting them. It thinks that if they lose weight, the, the, the you know, attractive people, thin people are shunned by society. A lot of people think they're shallow or stupid. Uh, no one respects them. Uh, people think that they're bitchy and stuff and they've got this message and now their subconscious mind thinks it's protecting them by stopping them losing weight because they don't want them to become that person and now people slag them off and when you fix your subconscious mind suddenly all this other stuff you know you lose weight automatically if you could explain that in a credible way with case studies of people you've helped suddenly these people are going to be like hmm now you've got something here um, so now we move on to number four which is I'm going to write this in lowercase describe your apologize for the disgusting handwriting this good describe your audience specifically um not to labor the point or anything but specifically is <laughs> capitals and underline three times so where a lot of people go wrong is they describe their audience um but they don't go into enough detail they don't describe it so the person's like, when the person's reading your post or seeing the video, they should be like, oh my God, that is exactly me. Um, so let's say, uh, last person to join, Sherry Green. If I wrote a post that said, this post is all about Sherry Green. Well, if Sherry sees that, she's going to read every damn word because she's going to be like, that's exactly about me. What's he talking about? Now, obviously, you're not going to write that in a post, are you? But you want it to be almost that good where your ideal person goes, that is exactly me. Oh, my God. And when they see that, they're going to carry on reading. So an example, opening line might be, if you're a smart professional guy who works a lot of hours, you may have given up hope of meeting your soulmate. So speaks to the smart professional guy who works a lot of hours, who's like, you know what, maybe it's not going to work for me. You know, they've seen all like the pickup advice. It says they need to be trolling the bars every night. And they're like, well, I haven't got time to do this, and I don't want to do it anyway. So where are we going to go next with that? So that's the key. Where are we going to take this? So if you're a smart professional guy who works a lot of hours, you may be hoping you and your soulmate. Where do we go next? After all, so now we're describing more detail the situation. After all, by the time you hit your 30s and you've got a lot of responsibility at work, well, the idea of trolling the bars, running pickup game five nights a week, well, it's not that appealing, is it? Plus, most of the women are drunk and it's hard to create any kind of real connection. While this lifestyle might be good for a 19-year-old pickup coach whose only job is going out and picking up girls every night, it's not really feasible for you to be out until 4 a.m. most nights when you're up again at 7. Those frat boy coaches don't seem to be able to grasp that. 
So what you've done, you've described his situation in great detail. And he's like, that is exactly how I feel. That is exactly me. So one thing that people um, miss when they talk about the, you know, finding your ideal niche and all that kind of stuff is they think, oh, I need to be talking about a really specific person. They come up with like a customer avatar, Susie, 45. She's got three kids and she likes reading CNN and she drinks the glass, drinks three glasses of Chardonnay every Saturday night and goes out with the girls and uh, goes out with her husband for a meal on a Friday. And she does, you know, she works as a IT project manager or whatever. Sometimes that's who you're talking to, but a lot of the time it's not one specific person you're talking to. It's a situation you're talking to. So it could be a different kind of person who's in this situation. And it depends on what your offer is and what you're helping people with um, for whether you're talking to a specific person or a specific situation. Again, that's something I help you with. Um, there's been a number of people I've helped. Um, if you it's Sam, if you look on my website, I look on the case studies, Sam was one of them where he came to me and he's like, everyone's telling me about um, niching down and it just doesn't feel right for what I offer. There isn't one specific kind of person. I can help almost everybody and I don't want to like limit it to one person. I'm like, no, you're not. You're in, you're in for people who are in this situation. But that person in that situation could be a lady in her 60s. It could be a man in his 20s. It doesn't really matter. It's a situation you're describing. And when I said that to him, he's like, bang, like light bulb over the head. That makes sense. But because, thanks, Vicky. Vicky says, brilliant. You make it sound so obvious. I don't think of these things. Well, that's why I'm here. <laughs> um, but you know, this, this applies, especially if you're in life coaching, any kind of like confidence, anything like... Uh, you know, you help people feel better about themselves or whatever. Um, you you are maybe talking to people in a situation rather than um, a specific person because you could help a 20-year-old man with confidence or a 45-year-old woman. You know, people, both those people experience confidence issues, don't they? Um, so again, you know, if you want to know how to do this, come to me. I know you're thinking, oh, well, you might, you might try and sell me a program. No, 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 no. Oh, I might have to spend some money. I want to keep all my money for myself. I've, I've invested in too many programs before. I don't want to waste money again. And I understand that, you know, I've been there before, but I invested probably a hundred grand before starting making money, but I am so glad I did because I took little bits from each program. Some programs were good, some not so good, but I took little bits here and there, added my own you know, magic sauce in, and now I've got my own unique thing. But all various bits I took, like a magpie getting all the shiny bits, and my own stuff, and now I've got something that can't be replicated. So if you want to know how to do this, don't be that person that's like, oh, I want to figure it out myself and save the money. Because if you come to me, like my program right now is six and a half US dollars, thousand. Um, which might sound expensive, but it's not that expensive. Where let's say, I, let's say I only teach you how to make 5K a month, which isn't that much money. Well, let's say it would have taken you an hour, uh, a year to figure this stuff out on your own. And it probably will take you longer. Most people watching this will never figure it out. But let's say it would have taken you a year. Well, at 5K a month, that's 60K you've lost out on because you didn't want to give me six and a half. Doesn't make any sense, does it? Um, not only that, you're getting skills for life. Uh, the ability to write really attractive copy that reels people in, that makes them go, this is really entertaining and interesting, and just grabs them straight from me off. The ability to filter out people who aren't appropriate so you don't waste time with them. The ability to convert your ideal client into customers so they don't slip through your fingers. These are skills and principles that apply no matter what business you put yourself in. So if you're a life coach today or a fitness coach, but you decide in a year's time you want to do someone else, you've still got those skills. Instead of going, oh, well, I only know how to do this for this one thing, and now I'm starting from scratch in a new business. So, you know, if you want to be like Dahlia, if you want to be like Michael, if you want to be like Paul, you know, Dahlia's made 20 grand recently, more than that. Uh, Michael made 10K in his first month. Dahlia, um, Paul made 20K in a few weeks. Uh, different people take it take longer, but everyone gets there in the end as long as they stick with it, and I stick with you as long as it takes. As long as you stick with the process and you're willing to go with this, you'll get there in the end. Um, it's a matter of getting your content up to the level where people start noticing it and start going, okay, I want this, and then knowing how to convert people. Once you fix those two things, you, know, you can make pro progress pretty damn fast. Don't believe people when you say it needs to take years and years to get good at marketing. If you focus on the right things and you've got a coach who knows what you need to be focusing on and what you're getting wrong and how to fix it, and then you fix it and fix it and fix it, and you keep on getting there until there's nothing left to fix, you can do this in a month or two, no problem. Instead of being like everybody else where they just keep on, you know, they join another like $99 a month group where it's like they get to ask a few questions or they buy another 9K course where 
they get added into a generic Facebook group where they get to ask questions. And if they're lucky, they get an answer four days later if it's like generic. And nobody's looking at their business saying, this is what you need to do next. Well, stop doing that and come to someone who knows what they're doing because actually going to look at you specifically, your specific business, look at your actual skills, your area of expertise, what you're going to enjoy doing, and the results you get for people going, okay, this is your offer. This is what you need to be doing. This is how you need to present this offer. These are the kind of people you need to be working with. This is how to do it. Go. And then is with you every step of the way showing you how to do that. I don't see anyone showing you how to do this, especially not for the price that I charge. So if you want to know how to do this and stop messing around and actually get the result, then don't be one of those people that's scared to make an investment in themselves or like, you know, one of those like people that's like, oh, I've been hurt before. I'm never going to date again. No, you still need to make investments. Just do it intelligently. Do it in a way where you're not just throwing money at the wall and hoping you get some back, but making an intelligent investment where you go, this is going to pay me back an ROI. This is going to be a good investment instead of just falling for the next magic bullet thing. Anyway, so to recap, um, so we're not doing clickbaiting, but my favorite things are. So the goal here is you've got to grab people's attention so we don't just scroll past you on the news feed. Then you've got to do something with it. So if you grab someone's attention in sentence one, but then you bore them in sentence two, they're going to scroll on by. So you need to grab that attention and then get them interested. And then the more they read, the more interested they get. Um, by the way, if you've got any questions, uh, it's six weeks, Vicky. Um, the actual content is six weeks, but uh, I do support you for longer than that, basically as long as it takes, really. Uh, but the content is like one piece of content for six weeks. We put out your offer in about week three or four, but some people sign people up sooner than that. And then the aim is that you've got a number of people into your program by the end of the six weeks. Um, so to recap, number one, open loops. So make them ask a question in their minds that can only be answered by them reading the whole of your thing. Number two, a benefit. So what kind, what's going to be the strong benefit that I really want by reading this piece? Uh, there's a hook in there as well. You can use easy. Like how is this going to be easy for me to do rather than like some laborious, long, like time consuming, awful thing. Number three, secret fear. Um, what are the secret fears that people are worried about? Like, you know, the, the government wants to take away your guns or you know, the government is secretly spying. Facebook is secretly spying on all your conversations. Um, here's proof. No, everyone's worried about that. That's a secret fear. Number four, to describe your audience specifically. Uh, so what are your audience doing? Either your audience is a person or your audience is a situation. What are they doing right now where they can recognize themselves in your program and like in your post? And they're like, that is me exactly. Um, so yeah, thanks for watching. Um, I think I've been on for long enough now. If you're watching this on the replay, by all means, ask questions. Uh, and come back to me later and I will answer them. Otherwise, thanks for watching and see you again soon.